This is JBigTicket23 from GreenPCGamers.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to configure a RAID 10 on a Precision T7610 workstation using the integrated LSI 2308 RAID controller. So if you need a ton of extra storage um, and you need it backed up, this is a great way to do it. So in our case, we're going to do four four terabyte SATA, and these are enterprise class Dell certified drives. You can definitely pause it, pause this and take a look at the model numbers if you want to you know, copy what, uh, what we're doing. So to install these drives, we had to pull open this plastic bezel piece. As you can see, you just push down a little plastic knob and you can get right into it. Comes out very easy. Um, these are our four SATA ports that, uh, well, SAS or SATA, uh, they work for either. In our case, we're going to do SATA, so we've got our drives already in the trays. And we just slide them right in and lock the lever, and they're in. Um, if, you have, uh, if you have trouble installing the drives into the trays, um, feel free to comment below. We have another video that we can post for you that shows you how to put the drives in the trays. So we're going to pop all four of these drives in. Then we're going to go and configure a RAID. So these install very easily. If they don't install easily, double check to make sure you've lined everything up properly. Don't force them in. They will slide in, you know, like so. If you just copy the video, you'll be in good shape. So then we'll put our bezel piece back on so the system looks nice and pretty. Which is easier said than done with one hand. Okay, so we've got that locked back into place. So let's get it plugged into a monitor. And as you can see, we've got it plugged in. This is part of post. This is the LSI 2308 controller. We hit control C to invoke the SAS configuration utility. Once we do that, it brings us into the utility and it does take a little bit of time. So, um, so now we're in, here's the LSI SAS 2308 integrated array controller. That's what IR stands for. Go ahead and click Press enter on that, it'll bring you to this other screen. Uh, go ahead and tab down to RAID properties or use the arrows, hit enter on RAID properties. So this RAID controller can run RAID 0, 1, or 10. So if you wanna run, run RAID 1, that's two drives mirroring RAID 10, minimum of four drives. And then obviously you can do a RAID 0, which will basically stripe across all drives. There's zero redundancy. We're gonna do RAID 10 because we want we want redundancy. We're going to do those four, four terabyte drives. As you can see them here, all you have to do is tab over or use the arrows and go ahead and hit space bar and put yes on all of these drives. Every time you hit space bar, you enable them and then you can hit C to create the volume. Once you hit C, go ahead and save and exit out of the volume. Brings us back to this screen. So we'll go back into RAID properties to make sure our RAID configuration is complete. So as you can see, we've got our four, four terabyte drives. It's giving us about 7.275 terabyte. It's optimal. Uh, the drives are just initializing at this point and that's fine. You can, at this point you can load your operating system. So it'll, they'll initialize in the background as we do it. We won't get it, you know, the full throughput that we'd normally get when they're initialized, but, but that's okay. So at this point we can exit the utility. We're going to load windows 10 on the system, but we'll fast forward through that part. Um, so here's a here's a really important note if you're going to install drives that will equal larger than two terabyte in array configuration you must go into the f2 setup and change your boot settings to uefi if you don't do this prior to loading windows you'll have to reload it again because you're only going to be able to use two terabyte of that virtual disk it'll show you the full volume but it'll make uh, about five terabyte of it unallocated, which you just can't use. So make sure you go into the F2 setup and enable uh, UEFI if you plan on doing larger than a two terabyte virtual disk. All right, so we're going to show you how to do that. So we're in the F2 setup. You can get into the F2 setup by basically rebooting the system, tapping F2 in post, and then it'll bring you into this utility. So 
we're going to go in and we, we the SAS RAID controller is obviously enabled because we already configured our RAID, but that must be enabled. So if that control C, the screen didn't show up for you, then you got to make sure that's enabled and then it'll pop up. You can go do that. So there's our virtual disk. You can see that under drives. SATA operation doesn't really matter for us because that's only working with the optical drives. Okay, so here it is. Go to boot sequence. Change it from legacy to UEFI if you are going with a virtual disk larger than two terabyte. If you're not, you can leave it as legacy. It's fine. It'll see, you know, if you're doing like four 256 gig solid state drives, whatever, leave it as legacy if you want. Okay, so we, we're fast forwarding here. Sometimes, depending on your drivers, or not in your drivers, but on your BIOS settings, it will require you to manually install a driver at this point in Windows 10. Now, we we have the latest BIOS installed, which I believe is A17. So Windows 10 is seeing our virtual disk without any additional you know work. If you do need to load the driver manually, you'll have to go to Dell support page, find that find the driver and and grab it. And this happens typically with like an H310 or some of the other LSI upgrade controllers. I believe that this integrated rate controller, you should be golden. But if you do need to do that, you go to load driver. If that happens to you, comment below. We can try to help you out. So basically, um, it sees the drive right away. 7.4 terabyte. It's a lot of a lot of native storage in a RAID 10. So, you know, we put 16 terabyte worth of drives in the system. And, you know, this is what you get in RAID 10. But it's completely redundant. If you have a drive fail, it'll tell you. You can replace a drive. You won't lose any data. Okay. So, Windows is, we fast forwarded. Windows is installed. We're going to go and make sure that we're seeing that drive, uh, that virtual disk properly. So, we'll right click on start, go to disk management, let it load. As you can see, we're getting about 7.5 terabyte. Uh, Windows did partition it a little bit goofy, but we are getting you know the full full search now. If you did not change from legacy to UEFI, it will show up as two terabyte, and then you'll have five terabyte unallocated. And then you're gonna have to reinstall Windows. So make sure you change to UEFI. Here's our um, under File Explorer. As you can see, our local C is well. They're giving us seven point two two five terabyte, and so everything is working perfectly. So that's how you do it for RAID 10. If you want to do a different configuration, um, you know, you can do RAID 1, RAID 0, but RAID 10, we like that one because it gives us redundancy. All right, so uh, if you have never visited our site and you want other upgrade ideas, um, go to our site, uh, greenpcgamers.com. We basically go through these precision workstations and show you ideas on how to, how to upgrade them. So. Here's the T7610 page. Um, we'll give you processor upgrade ideas, memory upgrade ideas, hard drive upgrade ideas, um, graphics cards. We basically, what we normally do is cater systems to gaming, but they work really, really well for any sort of application. As always, if you like what you're seeing here on YouTube, definitely subscribe to our channel. Um, we'd love to have you as part of our community. And if you do have live questions, um, if you if you want to ask live questions, definitely follow me on Twitch. Um, my handle is jbigticket23, and uh, feel free to pop in and uh, follow and uh, ask live hardware questions. Uh, thank you so much for watching.